This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So hierarchy of the course. Now I'm having a little bit of a problem here. I mentioned at the end of the uh, the second part, the second lecture in chapter one. I mentioned that um, as a result of Brexit, I don't know whether European law is going to play such a major part in our lives as uh, as it did whilst Europe, whilst Britain, UK was still a member of the European Union. Um, so. The hierarchy of the courts in these notes and before Brexit is effective tells me that the European Court of Justice is the big one and the Supreme Court in the UK is not actually supreme because our Supreme Court is now secondary to the European Court of Justice and the European Court is therefore the super supreme if you like. It binds all English courts, it's not bound by anyone, and it's not even itself bound by its own previous decisions. That is a little bit unusual. In the House of Lords, um, the House of Lords, before it became the Supreme Court, the House of Lords in its judicial capacity, rather than its legislative part of the second chamber, the, in the bicambric government, uh, we had two Houses of Lords. We had the House of Lords in its um, legislative capacity, sitting in the House of Lords and giving second readings to bills before they became statute. But we also had the House of Lords, which was the legal, sitting at legislative capacity. And so, uh, I, every now and then I slip and refer to the Supreme Court as the House of Lords. The House of Lords itself was previously bound by its own decisions, its own earlier decisions, but they came up upon a case where it was such a major anomaly to, be, to continue to be bound by its own previous decisions would have been well, quite clearly unfair and, and wrong. And so it allowed itself to move away from its own previous decisions. But it's an unusual occurrence. Normally it will follow the basic principles of ratio decidendi. Anyway, right at the top of our tree at the moment until Brexit kicks in is the European, European Court of Justice. And it's not bound by any, it binds all English courts, but it's not bound by anyone except, no, not except, not even itself. On the second tier down is, is our own homegrown um, Supreme Court, previously known as the House of Lords, but I, I really must stop saying that because I don't want you to remember that. It's now known as the Supreme Court. It sits typically, it sits with five judges, typically it hears appeals from the Court of Appeal. Five judges, but they don't. You don't appear in front of them in person. There's no plaintiff, defendant, appellant, respondent. There's none of that. They review the, the the notes of the previous judges, the High Court and the Court of Appeal. They review those notes and they read and they consider and they ponder the evidence that was available to these lower courts, and they may reverse the decision from an earlier court in the same case, or they may overrule a decision from a different case, an earlier case, or they may distinguish the same as the High Court stroke Court of Appeal judges distinguished. Uh, and so they may do that. So these five Supreme Court judges don't hear evidence, they read the evidence available, they read the story behind the case and as a result of that they then have a meeting and discuss and maybe find by majority, it doesn't have to be unanimous, it will sometimes say blah 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 found, blah blah, judge this and judge that, dissenting and they will show their dissenting views of these two dissenting judges but they will, they will pass their written judgment about the case that has been brought to them. So that's the Supreme Court. It's staffed by the law lords, by five lords, typically five lords, doesn't have to be typically five lords, sitting in camera, sitting uh, without any record of their discussions and their um, debating. Court of Appeal is next, that's the, the next run down. This used to be the second most important court behind the as it was, the Supreme Court in its former name. 
the sort of court of appeal typically is, is sat and presided over by three judges hearing appeals from the High Court. Now, the High Court is bound by earlier Court of Appeal decisions. But so also is the Court of Appeal bound by earlier Court of Appeal decisions. So if the High Court judge has issued a judgment which has been dictated to them because they're dependent upon the earlier precedent from the Court of Appeal, what's the point of appealing to the Court of Appeal? So in that situation, you would bypass, you would leap, it's called leapfrogging, you would leapfrog the Court of Appeal and leapfrog straight into the Supreme Court with your appeal, asking the Supreme Court to overrule or reverse an earlier Court of Appeal decision. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be reversed, would it? it would be asking them to uh, overrule an earlier Court of Appeal decision. So it binds all English courts, but it doesn't bind itself. So Court of Appeal is not bound by its own previous decisions. And it's bound, it is itself bound by the European Court of Justice. But of course, all courts below the European Court of Justice are bound by the earlier decisions of the European Court of Justice. Then we move down into the next layer. So we've got European Court, Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, now into the High Court. This is the one, if you get a case going to this level in the English legal system, it's the High Court, presumably, where you will finish. You probably won't want to go to Court of Appeal, probably won't want to go to um, Supreme Court. So High Court. Three divisions, binds all lower courts, but is bound by all three higher courts, Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, and European Court of Justice at the moment. And then we get to, uh, we'll come to the, the three divisions. Oh, I'll tell you about them now. Uh, Chancery Division, which hears <laughs> financial matters tends to be. Um, Queen's Bench Division, which the QBD, which um, hears pretty well any case that the other two divisions don't want. And the third one is um, Family Division. Now, it used to be the case that we had Chancery, uh, Queen's Bench, and the third division used to be called Probate, Admiralty and Divorce. But because divorce and family matters have become so much more common, frequent, prevalent, that they've taken probate admiralty and divorce, and they've sent the probate cases to Chancery, and they've sent the admiralty cases to Queen's Bench. And so we've now left with divorce and surrogacy, maintenance claims, splitting of assets on a divorce petition, uh, so the family division has now got its hands full, and probably, and no grounds for saying this, but it's probably the busiest of the three. They bind all lower courts, they're bound by all higher courts, and they're bound by their own previous decisions. And typically, judges in a high court will just sit on their own. So we've got five judges sitting together in the House of Lords, and three judges in the Court of Appeal, and one judge in the um, high court. And Victoria Gillick, who was concerned about her daughter being prescribed uh, birth control pills uh, and felt that she should, be, have, should, she should have been kept informed, took her case to the High Court and said the doctor was wrong in prescribing birth control pills to my daughter. He should have told me. And the High Court said, well, no, we disagree. The judge said, no, we disagree. So she appealed it, and she was supported by the, some organisation of protection of family unity, some, some organisation. So she was sponsored through this because it's an expensive operation to do this. She went into the Court of Appeal, and the Court of Appeal sat, and they, they heard, and they listened, and they talked, and they discussed, and they rejected her claim unanimously and said, no, patient, patient confidentiality, the doctor has a duty, primary duty to the patient, and there is no secondary duty to the mother of the patient. So it got rejected out of Court of Appeal. So on she goes into House of Lords. And the House of Lords, five of them, sat and discussed and taught and read and 
and mulled it over and said, no, she's wrong. She's read patient confidentiality. So she's losing 9-0 at the moment. One from the High Court, three from the Court of Appeal, and five in the Supreme Court. So then she goes to European Court of Justice. Thirteen judges are sitting, drawn from around the, the various states, but the European Court of Justice. And they said, what on earth is this woman talking about? No, and then they rejected it 13 no. So she lost 22 nil. It's like a, a football score of Australia playing Nepal. Uh, it was just an outrageous defeat for her. She could not have afforded it. Heaven knows what happened to her daughter. I mean, history does not record whether her daughter needed those birth control pills or not. But anyway, that was the situation. So that's the, the ranking of the court system. Below the High Court, we've then got the Crown Court and the County Court. And these, um, in the town where, I'm, where I used to live in Lancashire, just north of Manchester, um, we had our own County Court, our own Crown Court. Um, and it's the case that there are County Courts, Crown Courts in many of the major towns and cities throughout England and Wales. Um, and they have jurisdiction within their own boundaries. There's only one uh, Crown Court that has jurisdiction and can hear cases from anywhere within England and Wales, and that's the Old Bailey in London. Um, so the Crown Court hears criminal cases, and it binds no one, and it is bound by everyone above the High Court, Court of Real, Supreme Court, European Court of Justice. But it doesn't bind itself, so it can change decisions, it, it's not obliged to follow the ratio of the earlier Crown Court judges. And same with the County Court. The County Court has civil cases in the district, in the area, uh, binds no one, not even itself, but it's bound by all the higher courts. And then we get into these ancillary ones with magistrates court and administrative tribunals, employment, employment appeal tribunals. Um, we, we have these dare I say, of lesser importance, but they do administer the law uh, at a lower level, also, I hesitate to say, but a less important level. So they would hear cases of burglary, for instance, local burglary, speeding offences, traffic offences, public, public exposure, public indecency offences will be heard within the magistrate's courts. Um, Binds no one. The staff, the magistrates are amateur judges. Um, they're people from the locality of good standing, um, so you don't want any former criminals serving as magistrates. They're drawn from across the political spectrum. They're invited, or the Lord Chancellor invites people to apply to be magistrates, uh, and they try to get a, a mix of um, men, women, um, white Caucasian, black Afro-American, Asians, uh, a, a mixture of races, ages, professions, and you don't have to be professionally qualified, you're just a, a person from the local community of good standing who is prepared to give up their time in order to assist in the process of law. So that's what magistrates are. And, and, and two or three people, and, and I know a, a former uh, Kaplan lecturer who was a magistrate. Um, one of my school colleagues from primary school became a headmaster in the, a local school, and he was a magistrate. I was best man at a wedding where the bride became a magistrate, um, a member of selling insurance to the National Farmers Union was a magistrate in, within my acquaintance. So they're just, just ordinary people like you and like me can become magistrates. Tribunals, employment tribunal, less formal, quick, cheap, easy. You may or you may not, it's up to you, uh, employ a legal representative, but you would sit around and, and the uh, administrators, the arbitrators, not administrators, the arbitrators, will sit and listen to your case and you would accept that you were going to be bound but there are certain situations on a matter of legal principle where the um, 
arbitrator will make a mistake and he will go against the principles of law, in which case you are allowed to appeal on a point of law. You're allowed to appeal um, to Court of Appeal. But only on a point of law, not on a point of fact. There are others. There's the, for instance, the Ecclesiastical Court, which hears cases about um, religious affairs, religious matters. Um, I think, I don't think I've ever seen Ecclesiastical Court ever written into an F4 law exam. It's difficult now because, of course, the questions are no longer published. They used to be published they, when it was 10 mark questions, 10, 10 mark questions. They used to be published and, and we'd be able to read through and see what questions have been asked. But of course we can't now in this multiple choice format. Moving on, tracking. Three types of track. Um, these are designed in order to help to speed up the process of, of dealing with legal matters, legal affairs. So the, the, the track system, I think it was introduced back in 1960s, I suppose, like 60s, 70s, something like that. But again, dates are not important, so don't bother looking that up even. But we have the three types of track. We've got small, fast, and multi. And the small claims track deals with cases where there is an amount in dispute, less than 10,000. It's no good saying, well, I'm, I'm going to ask for 12,000, but I would happily settle for 10. Because if you're asking for 12, you're no longer small claims. If you would happily settle for 10, then you go for 10. Well, you might have to settle for 8. But if you're going to claim more than 10, then you're no longer available to sit on a small claims track. You would have to go into the fast or multi track system. It's informal, it's uh, a lot less onerous and almost frightening, uh, a word I'm prepared to use. It's quite, quite, um, I've lost a word. If you ever go into a court and see the, the judge sitting there with their wig on, that's, that's frightening unless you're prepared for it. But a small claims court is just a, a local district judge and they will hear your case and they will administer justice on the spot. It's, um, the cases uh, will not last longer than a day and you would get your hearing if you take out a small claim, your, your case will be heard within six months. But if you are hoping to get costs awarded to you, then you don't really want to go to small claims because costs are not awarded, except you can claim the costs of the court that you've had to pay from the person losing the case. They would have to pay your court costs, your court fees. So that deals with small claims. Fast track and multi. Fast track is more than 10, but less than 25. Again, if you've got a 30,000 claim and you'd settle for 25, don't go to fast track. Your claim is more than 25, so you'd go to multi-track. So more than 10, not more than 25. The trial will last, I've said, less than a day, which is fine, or more than a day if it's multi. If it's anticipated to be just a one-day case, you're still okay. As long as you're less than 25, you're still okay for fast track. But if you're less than 25, it's going to take a long other day, you're into multi-track. Again, less formal court procedures. It takes up to a year to get to court. The mediation costs, if there are any mediation costs, these will be shared by the two parties. And a successful party will can be awarded costs, which is different, of course, from uh, small claims. You can be awarded the costs of your claim. Multi-track, more than 25, full court hearing, management conference held to encourage alternative dispute, arbitration, basically, arbitration. So when I was involved in a multi-track case, suing a former partner who was also a former colleague and a former student, when I was involved in that, uh, we were advised by the court to mediate, and we did mediate. Uh, fortunately, it was through our legal representatives. I didn't have to meet him face to face. But mediation took place and we reached a settlement. Um, I could have asked some more, but it 
could likely have taken more, so take a lot more time. So I settled for the speed and the informality rather than going for uh, a longer period and, and more formal basis.